As you can see, they put me hard to work there. Um, when they made me up to things like opening champagne bottles, they would screw that up. So, um, uh, I thought it was a lot of fun having Tom and, uh, and Todd and, and Laura up here. To get a little, a little insight into the Ricky family, who the worst drivers are, and I had no idea that she not only was the worst driver, she can't cook, so. Um, our next guests, um, I always love having them up here. Um, they are uh, two of the greatest minds in the game of baseball. They can put together a roster um, that can rival anybody. They broke curses in two different cities. And they, they work harder than anybody to put the best team out on the field possible. Let's put our hands together for Jed Hoyer. And Mr. Theo Epstein! Kids are keeping you busy. I'm wrestling. Yeah, yeah. That, that works out every morning. And I, I always look at it. That's so selfish. <laughs> <laughs> How about helping the Cubs now and then? <laughs> and speaking of the Cubs, what a great team we have again going into the 2019 season. Uh, and, and, I'll, and I'll say this: I think it takes um, an extreme amount of uh, discipline and, uh, pardon my better French, the balls to um, have the strength to not just go out and get crazy and be like, we need to do this, we need to do this. Instead, it's like, no, we need to get better here, we need to get better here, but we have the pieces in-house to be able to do yes, that. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I just, I like that feeling when people start to doubt us a little bit, because I know how much talent and how much character we have in that clubhouse. I know what our guys are capable of. And, you know, it was, it was so rough living through it, but I think it, in a lot of ways, the way the season ended is, is going to provide a great silver lining, which is that um, everyone's going to remember that feeling, you know, falling short of our own standards and our own expectations. The guys are working their tails off this winter, and we have something to prove next year, which you don't often say after a 95 win season, uh, but we do. I cannot wait to see what it looks like. Oh, yeah. Mike problems. Here we go now. I can talk for you. Yeah, go ahead. Yours works. <laughs> there we go. I'm back. Yeah, yeah, we got you. Know. Yeah, so I cannot wait to see what it looks like. <laughs> Alright, first is champagne. Right? His mic is working as well as that thing I put in my mouth last year. <laughs> yeah. That is I won't do that to you this Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It's going over as well as your first video montage. <laughs> After, after we played Speak Out, by the way, last year, Jed didn't talk to me for six months. <laughs> yeah. He was just mad. Meryl's like, you need to go to the dentist. Did I do that? <laughs> yeah. um, you know, going out there and trying to find every way you talked about it, like um, kind of building within and getting better within. Uh, what's been kind of the message that you give along to the players and to the coaches of what the expectations are going into this season? You know, I think the biggest message is that, you know, we felt, you know, one game short. And that game, you know, you can always look at the last game, but it can be one game at any point, April, May, June, July, August. And I think, you know, finding that hunger, that urgency. Um, and it starts with everybody. You know, I think every person can do, you know, one one out, one one game better. Um, I agree with you. I like I like the fact that, you know, it you know, that bitter taste, you know, despite the fact that people want action all winter, I think it's gonna be a as hungry as spring training as we've ever seen. And um, I kind of like the fact that people are doubting us. I agree, it's kind of nice to, um, 
be in a different position than we were for a couple of years when was, you know, we were the clear favorites. I think we're going in and um, we have something to prove next year. And, you know, talking to the guys and, and talking to coaches, I think everyone's ready for that challenge. Because that's the thing about falling one game short is, is if you're honest with yourself and you're accountable, there, there's something that we can each do. Grab Every one of us. Let's grab that one. Yeah. I got three mics now. Can you hear me? Yeah. But, you know, but the thing about falling one game short is if you're honest with yourself and you're accountable for your own actions, there's something we can each do. Everyone in the organization, from players to me, Jed, front office, coaches, manager, training staff, everyone, to be one game better than we were last year. And you know, that's the motivation for all of us. We can't wait to take Jason's uh, stomach, so this is good. <laughs> you see, I was—I talked about honesty. I was honest that I'm not fitting in my clothes today. <laughs> now, now I have awareness that I need to hit the gym. <laughs> I'm gonna be selfish, and Jen, you're in charge. That's right. We're very, very self-aware. <laughs> you know, um, they couldn't have shot me from like my chest up. <laughs> that was another solution. Thanks, Jay. That, that was, was a great teammate right yeah, there. That was a great back. move. He's got my back. Um, well, last time I did this show. You know what? <laughs> it took me a lot to invite you back this year, so. <laughs> um, you know, and that was with sucking it in. <laughs> you, look at, you look at last year, um, you know, away from wins and losses and playoffs and all that stuff, individuals, you know, we've talked about it for years about what eventually would be Javi Baez and what we saw. Talk a little bit about from your guys' side because you guys see it, you scout it, you, you project it, and then all of a sudden you really start to see it play out on the field. What was that like to just kind of sit back, almost like a child, coming into his own and really becoming this monster of a player? Yeah, I think one of the, one of the best things about you know, building a, an organization from the ground up and, and knowing these guys since they were 18, 19 years old, you see the maturation and you see a guy like Javi, you know, and you see him mature year after year after year, and then you get the reward of last year, which is one of the one of the most fun and best individual seasons I've ever seen. You know, in terms of the the base running, the defense, you know, the home runs, the RBIs, he was incredible, and what he's become as a teammate. I think that the fact that his teammates his teammates looked at him for, for leadership, they looked at him because of the way he plays the game. Um, I mean, I think I think. And everyone wants to, you know, to play like Javi with that kind of reckless abandon. And I think for us to see the reward of, of that player development and that maturation, I think is it's really uh, incredibly gratifying for us to see what he's become. Yeah, it just it can change the whole personality of your team when you have one of your best players, who's also one, you know, one of your toughest players, one of the guys who cares about his teammates the most, and is just a general badass. Um, yeah, he can set a great tone for everybody. Um, you know, a lot of talk about um, the bullpen. You know, people are like, oh, we're going to go get this, got to go get this. But we had a lot of guys in the bullpen who did an incredible job last year. Really stepped up guys like Steve Ciszek, um, you know, to go out there and, and do what they did. You know, to bring back uh, Brandon Kinsler, um, to get a healthy Brandon Morrow, to get those guys out there. We have those pieces in the bullpen to be able to go out there and shut down games. Yeah, I think one of, the, one of the challenges with the bullpen is that you know, we had a great bullpen last year, and in a lot of ways, uh, the bullpen got us through the first half. Those guys were fantastic in the first half when our starters weren't going quite as deep in games, uh, and they really kept our season together. I think the nature of bullpens is that the occasional time they do uh, you know, blow a game, everyone talks about it, but the reality was that was a real strength of our team last year. We had a lot of those pieces back. We're definitely looking to, to, you know, to add from, from outside, and we're still trying to do things, but the idea that our bullpen wasn't a huge strength, I think, is wrong. I think it was. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you guys, I'm telling you, I, I, I'm around these guys a lot. They work diligently to always improve our team and make the Chicago Cubs the best team on the field. It's absolutely incredible what you guys do. So, now, enough of all those baseball questions. 
you know, oh. how's life? How the, the kids? They're growing up fast. Jack awesome. Andrew, yep. yeah, having a great time playing yeah. sports. Nice. Is it tough that Jack meets you in golf all the time? He's yeah, I got to work on. How old is he? Ten. Uh, my oldest son Jack's eleven. Eleven. He's eleven, and he whoops his butt in golf. He's a really good golfer. So um, it's fun to watch them grow up. You got three. Three. How's, how's that? Tiring. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Constantly chasing around. It's good, yeah. It's uh, no, it's a blast. I mean, going, going home at the end of the day is, uh, you know, it's wonderful. You have three boys running around all over the place, and uh, you know, you go to work and there's a bunch of guys running around. So uh, it's yeah, yeah. There's not much difference. You have like little kids and grown up kids. Exactly, exactly. Which is they have better toys in the big leagues. That's the that's the difference. Yeah. What about holidays? What did you guys do for the holidays? Uh, we went back to Boston for a few for a little bit, where, yeah. where the, my family is, and then. Uh, here for Christmas, and then got to uh, go down to Miami with a bunch of the team for uh, for Rizzo's wedding. It was a really good time. Yeah, he's uh, he's on his honeymoon. For those who don't know, he, he said he wishes he could be here and hello to everybody, but he's in South Africa somewhere. Yeah, we didn't want him to come. Yeah, we, we're tired. Yeah. We're singing, you know, he's gonna get up and try and sing, and then I'm like still the worst singer in the room. You know, so um, sweet. Well, I thought I'd have a little fun with you guys. Shocker. Um, um, and we're going to play a little game. As long as I can sit. Yeah, you can sit. Yeah, you can just stand up. You're good. You're good. You're good. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to play the first ever edition of Tuesday Night Trivia! I thought it was kind of fun because it's Friday and that song is Saturday, Saturday, so. Um, <laughs> here we go. I'm going to ask you guys three trivia questions. Each trivia question has a question with a bonus question. All right? At the end, if we need a tiebreaker, we have a tiebreaker. Jed, I'm going to start with you. You traded for Anthony Rizzo in 2012, correct? <laughs> Together, collectively. That was actually my deal, but. And 2011. And 2011. <laughs> With him. How many home runs did Anthony have in the big leagues before you acquired him in 2012? Uh, I should remember them because they were, they were, they were scarce. Um, I'm going to say two. Ooh, one. <laughs> so close. I gave him so much credit. Okay, bonus points. Yeah. You also acquired Zach Cates in that deal. Where was he born? I'm gonna say uh, only. I'm gonna say British Columbia because you wouldn't ask that question otherwise. Conway, Arkansas. Sorry, over two. <laughs> over two. Good choice, though. Good choice. I wonder you didn't make it. Uh, Theo. <laughs> what do you think? It's <laughs> your right-handed pitcher from Arkansas. A terrible track record. <laughs> Theo, in 2005, you resigned from the Boston Red Sox as the general manager. Where did you go? <laughs> Be honest. Be truthful. That so, night? That night, where did you go? That night, I went home and took my first Ambien. And how did you go home? I, I got a ride. In what? In a car. What kind of car? It was a uh, uh, Volvo. Yes. And what were you wearing? Gorilla suit? Yes! And for bonus points, what was the license plate number of that Volvo? <laughs> I have no idea, but it's, it's funny because that night on the news, <laughs> so, so they were broadcasting outside Fenway Park and they were doing like, you know, the stand up talking head thing. And there's this footage of a Volvo going by and then they put it together and they realize there's a, because it was Halloween, so there's a lot of guys in gorilla suits rolling around, but. Of course. Yeah. They figured out it was me and they were like playing it in slow motion and I walked by just kind of waving in my gorilla suit. <laughs> and, uh, it was like this is a Pruder film. Yeah, I was going to say that. My memory of that same night was uh, we were in our, our conference room. There's a long wooden table and I was talking to Peter Gammons on the phone at the end of the table and he was like, what do you think? Do you think Theo might actually leave? And while we were talking, he dove across the table and slid across the entire table head first in his gorilla suit. I was like... Peter, he might. He might. <laughs> there, I was drinking beer that night. <laughs> All right, these are, they're going to start getting a little bit tougher now. Right. 
Jed, in 2010, you were the general manager for the San Diego Padres. You guys swept only one season series that year. Who did you sweep? The Cubs. In 2010. You guys went 92 and 70. You had a good team. Yeah. You went 6 and 0 against one team. Cubs. Cubs. You want a hint? No, we lost three out of four of the Cubs in September. That's yeah. it. Was in the that same division. Their... In the I same division. As the Cubs? I'll say the Reds. No. Dodgers. The Pittsburgh Pirates. You went 6 and 0. Yeah. That's scary. Bonus you. questions. Bonus points. Yes. How many saves did Heath Bell have in that six game series? In the six game series? Yeah. Five. Three. Three. Five, sorry. Somebody, somebody's on it. I think there's, there's Bud Black in the yeah, first. Yeah, exactly. Hold on one second. Let's get that guy here. Come in! Huge Chief Belfin right there. All right. Uh, okay, Theo. What was your first transaction as a general manager? As a general manager, ever, anywhere. anywhere. Your I'm, first transaction. I'm pretty sure I got this. I think I claimed another right-handed pitcher from near Arkansas, Ryan Roop, off release waivers. Oh no, you signed Steve Wooder. <laughs> oh, I thought it was no, Roop also. No, no. claimed Roop first. You I'm claimed him that. first. Okay, yeah, I'm done with that. We were high fiving in the office, and I don't think he ever. It was <laughs> for bonus points. They, they he showed, me what, he showed up to spring training. And he's getting ready to throw his first bullpen. And I was like, Jez, is his arm action always been that way? He was, having, he, he was having a hard time playing catch, and sure enough, he walked into the training room, blew out, and never pitched again. Let's get the first All right, uh, Theo, you have two. Jed, you have none. Have none. Um, Jed, you were tied for the most career saves at Wesleyan University. Tied? Yes. Oh, sorry, leading. Who are the two pitchers right behind you? <laughs> I have no idea. Really? You have no idea. Oh, because they're behind me. Well, they. Good point. <laughs> you know what? Really good point. You have no idea? It's uh, Sam Elias and Nick Maselli. Great. Yes. <laughs> you have 11. Career saves, they had 10 and 9. Theo. Maybe those guys would be better at trivia than Jed. Yes. <laughs> Way better. Yes. I'm Theo. having a Baltimore Oriole as a performance here. For the win. <laughs> For the win. The Cubs broke a 108 year curse. The Red Sox broke an 86 year curse. How many years difference is that? You got it? Just old enough to drink. Ah, <laughs> yes. Our winner for trivia, right here, Mr. Theo Epstein. He won an autographed Dan Straley jersey. Oh, another great right hand position. Right there. A big pickup in the 2012 season. Yes. And that was the Dexter Fowler trade. There you right. go. Take that home. Bring that up. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, folks, always fun having Theo and Jed up here. Everybody have a warm round of applause. See you again.